welcome to another King Central. I'm Morgan Reagan and I'm here with Trey Lyles. Trey, I'm super excited to talk to you about all things basketball, but first I really want to start with what you're doing with the Sacramento Library. You started a book club. Tell me what you just love about reading. For me personally, I just like it because it takes my mind away from things. Okay. Uh, it lets me just kind of, I would say, just be free in that moment of just reading and like not looking at my phone, not watching TV. Um, you know, it's great having conversations with guys, but sometimes, you know, a, a little alone time um, in the midst of chaos almost. So, yeah. yeah, that's what I like about it. So wait, then are you a your kindle hard i like i like to have the book in my hands okay i don't know why i'm just that way um, a lot of people are. yeah you know i've tried the audio books i've tried the other stuff and it's just like uh, i'd rather just have the book for myself and, and they're good decorations for the house too that's such a i'm an audio book listener and so many people are like i don't understand that and it it's the same thing it allowed me to escape in a story and i can imagine it in a different way but i also understand why people just love holding a book and, and reading the story and it, it you know it allows you to escape are you just like a curious person like what when it comes to some of these stories or what type of books do you like to read i, I like a little bit of everything honestly i like biographies i like um, self-help i like fiction i fiction mm -hmm. i like everything so um there's not like people ask me all the time what my my one genre is and i, I wouldn't say that i have one because yeah. i just i read everything so if it, if it intrigues me or if it's interesting like oh I'll pick up on it. Because you know a lot of people are going to be throwing books at <laughs> Yeah, I've had a lot of suggestions <laughs> in the comments and, and in the uh, uh, in DMs and, and stuff in general. And people see me uh, at a coffee shop or something and they'll, they'll they'll ask what I'm reading or tell me what they're reading. So it's cool. So that's really cool that people are now kind of identifying you with this book club yeah. and reading. So tell me a little bit more about it. Like what made you want to start it? I don't know. I just, I just think like the fans were on Instagram or on Twitter like, always ask me what the book I have walking into the arena or something like that. So I thought it'd be like a good way for me to engage with fans and then, you know, kind of bring a, a awareness to just reading. And like, I'm a regular person too. I like to do regular things. I like to read, I like to do other stuff. So your love for reading has led to this book club, which ultimately you kind of hope to accomplish just raises more awareness of others like passing along books and making sure that you're donating is that is i mean is that kind of the goal with all this yeah it's just like i feel like a lot of people like don't really have access um and just coming from where i come from in, in indianapolis like we didn't have access to these things so um for me like always giving back to the community is top top priority so it just kind of worked out that way and I was like you know this is a perfect opportunity for me to use the platform to, to help others. So Indy you know uh, we were talking a little bit about you coming back from break and you were in Indy you had a youth basketball camp tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah so I do I do a youth camp every summer it's free for the community everybody's welcome to come and you know it's just me growing up there, we didn't have that really growing up. So I, was, I saw it as an opportunity for me once again to help give back to the community, give back to the kids. Um, and you know, the parents love it, the kids love it, that type of thing. So I just saw this all-star opportunity as a way to go back and you never see guys do two camps in one year. It's always a summer camp. So I was like, you know what, let's be different and have one during all-star weekend. It's a great weekend to have it. You know, there's gonna be kids and people in town, families in town. So it was great though, we sold out. Um, all the kids had fun, you know. Um, we had a couple of people come stop by and say hello to the kids, and everybody enjoyed it. Parents were in the stands; they enjoyed it as well. So it was just great. It was I love, you know, being able to be a part of it, and I'm going to continue to do it. So it takes a lot of energy. It like, does. It just does. thinking about yeah. like that, and depending on the ages and everything too. I, I mean, I guess it doesn't even matter. It takes a lot of energy out of you. Like, what are what are some of your favorite things out of youth basketball? Okay, the, the games, um, is it the skills, the drills. It, for me, it's the questions they ask their own oh. question and answer session, and then it's seeing. Uh, like the other day I saw like I want to say like 10 kids that I saw from summer camps in the past years that that come and showed up to this one and I saw their parents as well and it's just like you know people are are you know fans or, or whatever and it's yeah. just it just feels good to you know like 
kind of build a relationship with these these kids that are coming to the camp every year and you see them grow up and stuff like that it's crazy so you understand like that the impact that you can have. yeah and we have like uh this past one we did like a little classroom segment for like 30 to 45 minutes with each of the age groups and just going in there and speaking to them about confidence having confidence in yourself and just being you know um, all you can be and just controlling the things that you can, can control and then whatever questions they ask just answering those questions for them and just trying to be helpful so it's a it's a great thing that I think that we do and, and I appreciate everybody that helps. You being in Canada, growing up playing hockey and baseball, when did you get into basketball? Uh, I didn't get into basketball until I moved to, to Indianapolis in okay. like, oh, I think it was 03 and I was seven or eight years old and, and I was into basketball a little bit in Canada, but it wasn't like a major thing there, it was hockey. Or baseball so i was doing i was outside playing you know um, street hockey or at at school playing hockey with the guys and stuff like that and then baseball but once i got to the states it was it was pretty much basketball from from day one i played football for a year and that was it and i just it was just basketball so hockey made you tough then baseball you know gave you some other skills what what inspired you to continue with basketball once you were in the state um honestly it was a connection that me and my dad had um, cause I knew growing up that he played ball and, and he loved it. And it was just amazing. Oh, he, he said it, um, I think when we were in Indy with, to, to Mark that, uh, it was a way for me to make friends. So, um, I was new, obviously I would go across the street to the park that we had and I would try to play pickup and stuff like that. I really didn't know what was going on, yeah. but it was just, you know, it was fun for me. And then, then ever since then, it's just been like my main, my main focus, but like, it was something that, like I said, me and my dad connected on and it was like me and him always together doing basketball, so. I remember at the end of last year, after the season in your press conference, you talked a little bit about uh, going over to guys' houses, sharing meals with one another, mm -hmm. feeling this connection that maybe you didn't have before, and maybe even calling Sacramento like your NBA home. What, what's it been like finding that NBA home? It's been amazing, honestly. You know, uh, me and my dad were talking about it when I was home over the break. It's like, this is my ninth year, and this is the first time that I've been in a, in, on a team for longer than two seasons. So. Um, it's tough when you're just constantly moving around to build those relationships or, or, or hold on to them really when you, in the back of your mind, you don't really know. So it was it was amazing for me last year to, to kind of like feel that way with the guys. Um, it was something that I hadn't like, not, I'm not gonna say I wasn't open to it, but it was definitely something that was like, it was like uh, and one foot in, one foot out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then last year, just everything just kind of fell into place um, with that. And then, you know, it, it's nice to, to be happy to go to work and be happy to be around the people that you work with every day, so. It's felt too. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's something that I think people that cover this team that um, consume this team, all the games that go on, it's like that joy is mm -hmm. felt with this team. And I know so many of you guys have talked about it, whether it was at the end of last season, um, even a little bit more going into this season when you guys really find your groove and things are feeling good. And I know Mike Brown has talked about how that second unit has, you know, this bond and gives this really special boost. What is it about that boost you think that he loves and that really that you guys contribute to this team? Um, I think that I think he knows that we the the that our unit plays for the I'm not I don't want to say grittiness, but like just kind of like go out there and just throw our bodies around and do what we need to do to, to help the team to uplift the team and. I think he knows that with me and Malik, we're, we're two of the vocal leaders on the team that, that he's going to get our best and we're going to hold each other and the team accountable. So um, I think it just, it, it's, it's nice to know that you can rely on your teammates to, to continuously bring that energy, that effort, that vocalness. And even if they're having a bad day, you know they're going to be out there doing what they're supposed to do. So. Yeah, no, I mean, and that, that's something else that uh, I think it's, it's so important to have that obviously in professional sports. And I feel like within youth sports, you learn that like you can contribute even if you're on the bench and you can, um, you know, add that energy, be that spark. Do you guys seem like you add that energy with your voices, with just your aura, but then also the way that you contribute in your role. I mean, you talk about small ball five, or if they need you to stretch the floor, all these different things that you're being asked to do 
Has that been fun for you to show off like your versatility? Yeah, it definitely has. You know, um, last year I, I went up to the coaches and told them, you know, I could I could play five too. You know, I, I, can, I grew up playing. I was a center my whole life up until college. So it's like, I know how to do a couple of things. So it's just, it's fun. Um, and it's another thing for me competitive wise to, like, to go out there and compete when I'm, I might be smaller than other guys, other centers, whatever, but to go out there and compete and, and, and fight and just show that you know, not only myself, but everybody that we belong out there. I belong out there and, and I can help in, in more ways than one. You know, one of the things I, I take pride in is just controlling what I can control, which is my energy and my effort. And I might not be scoring, but you best believe I'm going to do something else to, to help and impact the you know, team, team on winning. Yeah, it's so. a team sport. I mean, that's yeah. what it's needed. You know, all these different things are needed. And I mean, that's you, you talk about how you grew up playing. Uh, in that position, but it still feels like you're playing in the best league in the world and you just play so much bigger than you are at times. What is that just confidence? Like, is there a different mentality shift? What is that? Uh, I think it's confidence and it's a little bit of a mentality mentality shift when you when you go out there and you see, you know, a, a guy There's no other four way. or five inches taller than you, <laughs> 100 pounds, 50 pounds wider than you. It just kind of, for me personally, I just got to, you know, all right, I'm going to go put my work hat on and, and I'm not going to be the reason why such and such happens, or I'm going to show them that they can continue to rely on me in this way. Trey Lyles. Man, Trey is just so smooth right now. And Trey oh. Lyles. Okay. Uh oh, chilling oh. in the Bronx and still doing the Hollywood shuffle with the triple. You mentioned Malik in that second unit with, you know, being that boost and being able to. Um, you know, whether you want to go in the direction of using the word grittiness or if you want to use even just like I don't know, confidence, I mean, whatever it is, what's it like when you see him playing so free and fun as well coming off the bat? Uh, it's great. You know, me and Malik have a have a pretty cool tight bond. So, uh, you know, for me, just being able to be a part of the unit with him and, and, and talk with him on the court, off the court, it's always in like a, a positive, you know, light um, with me and him. Um, we can say things to one another that we might not be able to say to other people, but, mm -hmm. but we know that we're coming from a good place and we're gonna hold one another accountable. And and um, for me, just to see him, you know, the year that he's having this year is, is amazing. You know, he's doing everything that we expect from him and some, so, you know, he's a huge boost for us. Um, off the court starting, whatever you want to say, you know, he's, he's one of those guys. Um, so, you know, just being able to be out there with him is, is fun and it's a joy. You talked about how Mike Brown, after last year, helped you regain some confidence. Can you talk more about that journey of regaining your confidence? What was that? Was that altering, you know, some of your game? Again, that your mindset, what was that? Um, you know, last year was a little rocky at the start. Um, I was in and out of the lineup for a little bit, but then, you know, I just went to him and I talked to him. His door, you know, he's, he, he, talk, he talked to us as a team and it was like, you know, if you have any questions, my door is always open and stuff like that. So um, me taking the time and him taking the time to have a conversation with one another, that that goes a long way for me personally, just on a respect level. Not to say I hadn't had that in the past, but it was just when I was up there talking to him, it just felt different. And then he acted on it afterwards after that. And then, you know, um, continuously just throwing confidence at me, building me up, never never breaking anybody down, not just talking about myself, but anybody on the team never, you know, saying anything in a negative light is always good and it's always positive and it's nice to be around, like I said earlier. So um, him just continuously doing that and the rest of the coaching staff as well. But when you have your, your head coach behind you too, it's just like another level of confidence that you can go to. So him continuously doing that for me, it, it helped me out in, in ways that were you know, unparalleled. And, mm -hmm. and I think just since then, it's just kind of been on the uphill trajectory. So, you know, um, I said at the end of the year, like there's not a lot of people that I would do anything for, but like <laughs> now it's like him, Jordy, like this whole coaching staff, it's like, I'll, I'll go out there and run through a brick, brick wall for y'all. So like, I mean, you guys helped me out so much that way. I'm a, you know, expand my, extend myself in, in ways that you guys need, so. It's wild to think that just like, a communication style yeah. could lead to that type of communication. It helps everything, you know, coaches are on us all, all the time about communicating with one another and, and they're doing it as well. So when you see the communication coming from the highest up all the way down to the bottom, it just helps. You've been here for a couple of years now. Um, what have you enjoyed most about Sacramento? Uh, I say the people. Um, yes. The people, the f not even not not even just the fans, but yeah. just people in general. Just like I got a coffee shop I go to, I'm going in there, I'm talking to people, you know, all day or not all day, but every day, and it's just like people are nice, genuine, like, and it's just a cool city to be in. And it's just like 
before I got here, it wasn't what I expected at all, but you know, it's, it's, it's a nice city to live in. I think I've had one brother run into you in a coffee shop and then another brother run into at like, I won't even say the grocery store just so but people don't know. <laughs> and, but, it, and, and my brother said to me, he's like, you know, I had to say hi to Trey. I had to just tell him thank you for, you know, always just leaving it all out. <laughs> I'm like, okay, coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it is funny that, you know, you play this sport that leads to people within the city that watch you feeling a certain mm -hmm. way. And it's cool that you are within the city so you're able to maybe feel that sometimes yeah. from others. Yeah, I think I think people just would appreciate not, even, not just speaking for myself um, individually, but just people that do the little things. Yeah. I feel like this is a blue collared city, I guess you could say, yeah. and um, they appreciate the little things, so it goes a long way. Well, then I gotta ask about the tray base. I'm sure yeah. you've heard it online, right? I've heard it, yeah. I've heard it um, <laughs> online, uh, a couple of interviews and stuff like that. What I think a great it's, community. It, it's funny, you know, I've, I've never had uh, something like that before, so uh, I'm just happy that I have the support, you know, from the from the tray base, from the yes. fans, so it's cool. I think there was one interview I even went into post game with you, and I was like, Trey base? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember so that. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was right at the beginning. And I oh. felt like a fool later on. I'm like, what are you doing? But I it just, I love the game and I love watching you guys play. And yeah. then when you do have those moments, I'm feeling a lot of what so many others are right. feeling and just came out in that. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so good. thank you for embracing it and not thinking I'm totally. No, not at all. I'm just getting word. We got Trey Lyles in the hallway. So let's go straight to the hallway. Talk to <laughs> Trey Bay. <laughs> Trey Lyles is in the hallway. What have you learned about being in the NBA? Um, you know, my college coach, Coach Kyle Perry, told me when I got there to, to control what I can control. Mm. And I think it took it took me up until probably my sixth or seventh year to really like think about it and be like, okay, like that's all you can do is really control what you can control. So it took me a while for it to turn turn around, but I think once it did, it just kind of taking me, you know, confidence, game, whatever, inside life, outside life of basketball, just taking me to another level, just realizing that. And I say it all the time in my interviews, after games, before games, after practice, whatever, they probably get tired of me saying is like, just control what you can control. And I know every day I can control my energy and my effort. So yeah, it took me a while to, 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 to latch onto that. Yeah, and and actually yeah, execute it. yeah, and actually execute it. Cause it's in your mind, but you know, your mind can play games and tricks on yeah. you all the way, you know, all over the place. So, you know, um, I think that, and then um, a couple of books that I've read, some help, self-help books have really like helped me. I think in my journey in the NBA is just like having joy, like I said, controlling what I can control. And then um, I was gonna say earlier, but like I'm on I'm on the bench, and I'm just sometimes I'm just thinking I'll have a bad game or I have a great game, and it's just like man, you've been dreaming of being being here for since you were seven years old. So whether you're playing good, whether you're playing bad, it's like dude, like just go go out there and control what you can control, and just be thankful that you're here. Um, yeah. So perspective is everything. Yeah, it and really it's is. it's crazy how it can totally shift your mood mm -hmm. or how you're looking at a situation or mm -hmm. anything. And you said since you were seven that you wanted this. It, you you knew at that at a young age that this was kind of the path that you wanted to go? I wouldn't say I knew spe like specifically, but it was like, okay, this is fun. And then this is really fun. I like this. And then it was like, I would say probably like seventh or eighth grade. I was like, okay, yeah, this is it. I don't need to do anything else. This is it. So. The love of the game was always there from the age of seven. And yeah. then like the seriousness to, this is what I want to do. It's like seventh grade. So. What What would you say was your your best skill set at a young age? I was, everybody just called me smooth because I was just Ooh. fundamental. I was just fundamental all the time. So really? yeah, my dad would make me watch uh, a lot of Tim Duncan. So like when I played for there the Spurs and was able to like meet Tim Duncan, he was one of the coaches. It was like, wow, dude, like, my dad used to force me to sit down and watch your videos and now get to talk to you one on one, stuff like that. So so I was just asking him like I was just I was like I asked him about college. I was like, you think you would have been ready or like after one year, like this type of thing. So just like getting to know him more personally and, and like this is an idol that I grew up like I tell people all the time, like, well I told them when I was with them, it's like, dude, I'm playing with people that I had 
posters of on my wall and I'll go back home and my parents would still have my room the same way. So I still had the same posters on my wall. And it's like, I told Damar, I told um, LA, I told Tim, I'm like, yo, like I still have y'all's posters on my wall. So it's just like kind of, I don't want to sound like a fan <laughs> right now, but I'm just letting y'all know that this is like surreal for me, so. For you personally, what do you want out of the rest of this season? We're more than halfway through. What do you want? I think I want what everybody wants. I think I want us to be more consistent. I think us. I think I want us to hold each other more accountable. And I think I want us. Well, I know I want us to play up to our capability and to, you know, show that we're a real team in this league and, and we can make a lot of noise if we continue to do the things that we know we're capable of and we've shown in spurts here and there. I think um, we're gonna. We, well, I wouldn't say we were surprised a lot of people, but we will be happy with our results if we can do that. And, you know, it's a long ways, you know, we're, we're still a young team in, in that light, but I think we know by now what we have to do. And, and, and if we could do that, we'd be all right. When you mention consistency, what does that look like for this group? Uh, I think it would look like us showing up every day and giving 100% effort yeah. um, on both offensive and defensive ends of the floor. And, and I'll say it, I said it to the team, I said it to Mike, um, I'll say it to guys individually at times, just holding each other accountable. Yeah. Holding, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll pull guys to the side. I, I, I do it during the games, I do it during practice. Like, come on, man, like, we know, like, you know, we know, I know, like, come on, man. I, I get on Fox a lot. It's like, come on, man. You know what's up? I ain't got to say nothing to him. I'm just like, come on, man. So no, just like things like that. And just, like I said, continuing to show up every day. If we if we could get 1% better every day with our consistency, it's like, we're just going to continuously get better, so. And that success, like even what does that look like on the floor? Does that mean just, you know, you say offensively and defensively, but defensively is that, you know, ultimately, yes, you want to get all the stops mm -hmm. in the world, but there's also guys that can shoot with their eyes closed yeah. and a hand in their face, you know? I, I would say it was, uh, it would be compete level. Mm -hmm. um, making that extra play, diving on a, uh, no, diving on a loose ball, um, just the effort. Like I said, I, I was, it's, it's a lot of what I say, it's like effort, you know, if, if we can continuously have an, um, um, a consistent effort on that end will be fine. And I, th I think sometimes that is the hardest thing to bring out of athletes, mm -hmm. even just growing up. It's mm -hmm. who wants to leave it all out there. Right. When you speak on that effort, does it feel like this squad, everyone wants to leave it out there? Or is sometimes is it just everyone needs a little bit of motivation from somebody else or a coach or a teammate? I think in general, not even just on our team, but in, in sports in general, you know, sometimes it's just you need to hear it or you need to watch it on film or, or something like that. And everybody knows. Everybody knows when they're given 100% effort or if they could do a little bit more. So everybody knows. And that just goes back to me saying we need to hold each other accountable and hold ourselves accountable because we all know what we're capable of. And we all know if we're, we're lackadaisical in certain plays or in certain areas. And, and you know, we watch film and, and we see those areas and you can't even say nothing because it's like, you know, I, like for me personally, it's like, I know, like I should have been there. I can't even say nothing. You're right. So just holding our, myself accountable, ourselves accountable will, will help out with that. It's difficult, but like you said. It is hard, it is hard. But, the communication yeah, yeah. and just knowing one another and where it's coming from, whether mm -hmm. from the heart or from. Just you know, being honest, being honest yeah. with yourself, being honest with your teammates, it, it'll help out a lot. Well, Trey, I really appreciate you joining Thank us you. today. Thank you for having me. Thank you.